Yeah, I would perhaps. Uh, Jürgen, yes. I, I, I just would uh, like to echo that. I also thought uh, uh, it's perhaps uh, good to try to establish social dialogue when you are in, in a crisis, in a deep crisis. But uh, I think uh, it's quite obvious that it would be better to have good industrial relations before the crisis, and then you can really use these good industrial relations. And <coughs> perhaps there is a point uh, to look at industrial relations. I even the, the term uh, became a little bit old-fashioned, uh, I think, but uh, it's the relationship between uh, the private sector industry and the government. And there, I think there's a lot of things which can be learned. <coughs> And also perhaps there's a case for the World Bank to, to look at, at these kind of things. I remember uh, the publication of the World Bank a long time ago and the East Asian miracle. I mean, it was quite clear that it was part and parcel of the East Asian miracle, these industrial relations with close relationship uh, between uh, the public and the, and the private sector. Of course, it can be done in a, in a good, in a bad way, but I think there's a lot uh, to, to learn uh, in that. Yes, yeah, just one, one point on that is that um, the, working, the, the importance of uh, in a dialogue of voice, um, for, in order to have a dialogue, one will expect the parties to have voice. And one of the challenges in developing countries is that uh, a majority of people at work are not okay. wage earners. And the mechanisms we know uh, for dialogue tend to be mechanisms of dialogue between wage earners and employers. And so I think one of the biggest challenges uh, in order to make sure that the voice of other groups, which also stand to be heard from, from the crisis, can be heard, is how to uh, really have mechanisms for the self-employed, for the farmers, also to be able to convey uh, information on what is happening to them and, and where is that is pressing to intervene.